Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. Hope everyone's having a good one out there. It is 1014 p.m. California time, July 25th, 2025. Uh, latest earthquake up here on the map shows a 5.2 earthquake right up there along the Aleutian Trench. Now, that's in between the regions here that have experienced a lot of large earthquake activity here recently. So maybe starting to show, maybe an area to watch here. Either way, 5.2, 57 miles deep here into the Aleutian Trench. And um, that's some newer activity. Still seeing some aftershock sequences there around the Russia area. A couple earthquakes this morning. Uh, some fives. Interesting that we're just seeing fives now. I'm wondering if they cut off the fours. Uh, it just seems a little odd because for every five, you should have at least a certain amount of four pointers and so on. But uh, so far, they're just showing five pointers now. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Still seeing some aftershock sequences, though. And a little bit back over here around the Sandpoint, Alaska area as well, where that seven pointer struck a while back. Uh, middle point, kind of watching that right now. See what happens. Uh, of course, anywhere along the Aleutian Trench is capable of producing some big-time earthquake activity. So watch that region. Uh, not a whole lot of uptick yet across the Japan area. Still somewhat quiet. Yeah, there's been a handful of earthquakes out there, but uh, nothing of any major swarming going on. I will double-check the uh, Japan site here. See what we're looking. See how we're looking here uh, with earthquake activity around that area today. So a little spotty. Only a handful of earthquakes there in the last 24 hours. Uh, let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. Pretty good cluster around the Indonesia area. Man, got uh, some bigger earthquake activity in there as well. Uh, we had a uh, 5.8 earthquake. This uh, originally came in here as a 6-pointer. Downgraded there to a 5.8 this afternoon. Looks like there was another uh, earthquake in that area as well, a 4.8. Um, been active, pretty clustered in this area. Is that a secondary one coming in up here? 5.2 and a 5.2. It may be just, it looks like it just got upgraded there to 5.5. Refresh this, make sure we got the most recent data here. Because one of those models are showing a 5.5. 5.2 and then a 5.5. So we'll see. I don't think there was two earthquakes in there. I can't check because my seismograph stations there are offline, off but we'll check back on that here in a little bit. There's that larger movement down there outside of, well, real a distance here south of Australia. West of Macquarie Island is where they have this position there. 6.2 and a 5.7 this morning. Uh, it doesn't look like, well, let's see what do we got here. We do have some newer activity across that plate boundary, 4.6. That uh, could potentially stir things up further up along this region. But also New Zealand needs to watch out because we're right there along that um, boundary here, the plate boundary. Some older activity there from yesterday at Five Pointer. Uh, a couple threes in there. The Alpine Fault continues to uh, build up some steam. No big earthquake activity there for now. Uh, looks like they've settled here for a 5.4 earthquake. One magnitude earthquake there 5.4 uh, barely showed up there on the um, Alaska station Japan station is uh, no, I didn't pick it up either so but uh, 5.4 looks like they reviewed that and bumped up a little bit there in terms of the magnitude all right for the uh, west coast out here still seeing some activity around Mount Rainier nothing big just Nine earthquakes being recorded out here in the last 24 hours. A bunch there around the 1 o'clock time period. See that? So I'm kind of curious. Let's go over and check that out from the PNSN network. That monitors a bunch of stuff here in the Pacific Northwest. Trimmer counts, by the way, 14. Numbers going down. Uh, so for Mount Rainier, we'll go over here and check out the seismograph station. See what was happening there about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we'll have to go back here. To the previous day that'd yeah, be right about there there's there was a couple earthquakes there nothing big i think that earthquake there in the one o'clock hour was a what do we have a 1.5 that's the largest and of course it's going to look the largest here with all these other small ones included so i don't see any major uptick just uh still watching this 
even here in the last few hours a couple smaller spikes there and i'm starting to think even those even these little bitty ones are indeed earthquakes as well but at a super small magnitude but uh, nothing changing just uh got uh, some continual earthquake activity there uh, some around mount st helens down here a little small earthquake nothing big happening there northern california got those two earthquakes there one from this morning one this afternoon a couple twos nothing big going on now southern california is starting to see a little uptick out here seen some uh, movement above the 2.5 level uh, the latest one a 3.1 just off the san andreas fault here near banning that uh well, looks like there was a secondary earthquake in there as well uh, 2.9 previous uh, just afternoon and then a 3.1 so that is along well it's off of the um, San Jacinto fault zone Let's see which fault system hard to say there's a couple over here not on the San Andreas fault though that's a little bit further over uh, but uh, watch that Southern California in general has been pretty quiet just starting to see an uptick here today of uh, magnitudes above the 2.5 level bunch of movement up here across Ridgecrest and south of Bakersfield uh, there was a, another earthquake up here in the Sierra Nevadas 2.5 this morning that uh, kind of an oddball earthquake but uh, aside from that Bay Area pretty quiet uh, inland some movement there across Nevada a little swarm going on there near Tonopah Yellowstone National Park nothing really showing up there on the map couple smaller earthquakes there from this morning and um, Nebraska what's going on up there in Nebraska 2.4 see what we got up underneath here well it looks like it's at somebody's field beautiful green field out there I don't see any oil pumping operations out there there's some it looks like some mountain ranges out here so obviously there's gonna be some fault systems in that area uh, but it does sit outside of a ha known hazard zone pretty much in the lowest area that you can get but uh, some movement up there stirring up today some in the Oklahoma and of course Texas rocking and rolling uh, one earthquake way up north here of Quebec 2.6 this morning let's see what we got here for the rest of the globe Iceland seen low activity, a little bit of movement there across the northern mid-Atlantic ridge. Um, not so much here across the Mediterranean, fairly minimal. One thing I am noticing here is a little bit more northward clustering going on across Myanmar, across the Nepal area. Uh, even portions of the China region up there seeing some uptick. But uh, we'll continue to watch this. Like I say, we got a lot happening down south here. And for the most part, when things take place here along this boundary south of Australia right this is a mainly a divergent boundary zone a couple of strike slips out there but spreading seafloor center slowly uh, over time and that should amplify the stress out here in this region of the Australia plate so pretty much anywhere northward but also you know can have effects over here as well across New Zealand so we do have to watch that closely uh, Hawaii had a couple earthquakes out there today underneath the Pahala area nothing of any abnormal movement just that typical deep activity but uh, it really hasn't been swarming all that much out here ever since we've had that uh, consistent eruption activity it's been minimal as far as swarming goes at the deeper levels as uh, far as the Kilauea volcano let's go ahead and double check that real quick I, I don't think we're getting close but I do want to see if anything's changing because all this movement around the Pacific plate of course is going to have uh, you know some type of effect on the hot spot as that Pacific plate moves over there uh, the deformation data still on still on tap here to uh, produce another eruption well, episode 30 I believe is coming up uh, in a number of days though we do have you know we're only about halfway here uh, to our inflation level seen at the last eruption there back on the uh, 19th or 20th or so of this month so we're heading there nothing changing though no uh, noticeable difference uh, pretty good cluster across the middle America trench here bunch of fours coming in but a mixed bag of deep and some shallow adjustment pretty quiet down here across the Perchilli trench just a handful of smaller quakes there remember when movement happens up here folks I know 
you know, it was only a short time after the Alaska earthquake activity that we've seen that northwestward plate shift here. And that's when we've seen that 7.4 stir up off the coast of uh, Russia there. So with this newer activity, we could see things really ramp up here uh, in the regions that have been experiencing already a lot of earthquake activity, but also down there across Japan. So watch that. It's just a general plate movement here. The Pacific plate is off to the northwest, and it tends to shift in a pattern up here in this region as we get earthquakes along the Aleutian Trench there. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks, as far as any major news goes in terms of earthquake activity. Solar flare activity is, man, we're back down into the B flare category. Hello. Uh, looks like a G1 class storm possible there on July 27th time period. That's probably going to be here tomorrow night. Not that big of a deal, though. Um, we'll be lucky if we get anything from that. Uh, the sunspots, as numerous as they are, they're not very complex out here. Things are fairly stable with these sunspots, and they're further decaying. Uh, really not seeing anything out here. Maybe this region right here might pose a threat there uh, if it doesn't die off overnight. But uh, that's about the only region I'm watching here of any type of complexity. Uh, everything else out here is fairly stable. So the flare threat right now, um, these guys showing 40%. That's probably about right. Uh, I'm issuing a 40%, 50% chance for M flare, less than a 1% for X flare. As you can see, not, not a whole lot going on there. Uh, we had a bunch of thunderstorms up here in the last couple days in the mountains. I want to see if there's been any new fire starts out here. I didn't get a chance to check today, so let's see what we got. Man, a bunch of storms. Luckily, there was a lot of rainfall with these thunderstorms, so hopefully it limited uh, any new fire starts. We do have one up here, the Mammoth Fire. Uh, that's fairly new. Looks like that was created... Let's see, update 42 minutes ago. Yeah, this is fairly uh, fairly new fire. Looks like 861 acres up there in Northern California. Still got the Butler fire over here that's fairly big. Making some progress, though, at 10% containment. Uh, I don't see, fortunately, I don't see any major huge fire starts out here from all this lightning. What's this one? The Dean fire? Five acres? Uh, Southern California, not a whole lot going on down there. Looks like a lot of containment there with that older fire. So we'll continue to check back on that, though. As uh, far as Storm Prediction Center goes, for the remainder of the night, slight risk up there continues across North Dakota. A little 2% chance there in the green for some tornado activity, wind, and some hail threats out there for the remainder of the night and early tomorrow morning. Uh, now for the day on Saturday, got... Uh, just a marginal risk out here. Some thunderstorms back across Northern California in the Sierra Nevada mountains again. 2% tornado. Um, and that, maybe some wind, a little bit of wind, a little bit of hail, but it uh, looks like that severe weather is dying off there a little bit. As far as any major hurricane activity out here, let's take a look and see if there's anything. Uh, there's some out in the eastern Pacific, south of Hawaii. A couple disturbances here in the Atlantic. We got uh, one down here in the Gulf uh, near the Texas area looks like um, what is that one zero percent so Central Pacific just got that one over there across south of Hawaii but it should remain uh, south of the big uh, south of the island chain there all right uh, let's see what else we got here folks I think that's about it seismograph stations there kind of ringing like a bell a little bit from that 5.4 showed up there in Japan finally that's one of the S waves so we'll just kind of watch that after after a couple of weeks of heavy duty activity it's kind of mellowed out not really though huh it really hasn't mellowed out the six pointer down south and just we're finally starting to catch up at or maybe slightly above average now in terms of the the number of counts out here for the magnitudes the decent sized magnitude earthquakes around the globe so but, uh, yeah, we'll continue to watch this. Hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Have your, you know, enjoy the rest of the Friday. It's still Friday night here. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Have a good one, folks. Sleep well.